Hey guys, I'm Ich, and here's the thing. Many, many months ago, way before any of us knew how to spell coronavirus, is it one word or two words? Anyway, I was hired and given the substantial budget to put together a shoot that would lead to many pieces of content, including the following video. My clients in this case were the Melbourne Renegades, they're a professional cricket club here in Australia and we've been working together for years. For this particular video, the plan was to highlight four main elements, the skills, the fans, the atmosphere and the players. For the first three categories, the plan was just to use footage from the previous season, but for the last one, that's where the shoot came into the picture. The Renegades' primary colors are red and black, so my idea was to film in a dark environment and have a white light on the player's face and also some red lights around them to create some sort of grungy red contrast around their body and finally add more colored lights in the background to fill some of that dead space. But here's the thing. I'm good with ideas, but I'm not that great with lights. So for this shoot to all come together, I needed help from a great lighting technician, typically called a gaffer, and luckily, I know the best in the business. His name is Andrew, he's extremely experienced, very good at what he does, and he also happens to have his own YouTube channel where he reviews lighting equipment. So if you want to learn more about professional lighting, I definitely recommend that you go watch some of Andrew's videos, but maybe wait until this one is, you know, over. Anyway, I reached out to Andrew and asked him to explain to you guys how we created the whole setup for the Renegade shoot from start to finish because I think this was by far the most crucial part of the entire thing. And I think this could be very helpful to many videographers who work for a college or a professional or semi-professional team and are looking to create more high-end content. Okay, so let's talk about the lighting. So my name's Andrew Locke. I'm a gaffer, which is a film and television lighting technician. I work in Melbourne, Australia, and I've been doing this for about 21 years now. So my job is not just to do the lighting on set, but to make sure that we have everything we need to achieve the look. So to make sure we have the correct hardware and to make sure we have things like the uh, ample amount of power supply, for example. So uh, that's my job in a nutshell. Now, uh, with this shoot, um, it's quite an interesting one to look at because when you learn about lighting, if you've gone to film school or anything like that, uh, you get told that what you don't light is just as important as what you do light. Well, with this shoot, for example, with the mood that we're going for, which is, is quite moody, a lot of darkness, uh, a lot of shadow, what we don't light is actually way more important than what we do light. Now, just to emphasize why in a moody setup like this, what you don't light is way more important than what you do light. I took a few photos with the overhead lights turned on and you can see all of the rigging, all of the black material. Now with our lighting in the finished product, you can't see any of that because we've got very controlled lighting and we're not lighting up those areas. Further to that, if we just had light bouncing around everywhere, we wouldn't get the contrast on the face that we're after. Now, if you're after a moody look like this, it is absolutely paramount that you have control of the shooting environment. So for example, we don't want any stray light in the room. 
So you don't want to be shooting in a room that has skylights, for example, or big atrium windows. You want to shoot in a room where if you flick the house lights, everything goes into darkness. That is a good place to start. Now, further to that, the next thing that can kill moody uh, lighting effects is stray light or ambient light bouncing around in the room. So for example, uh, if we want this side of my face lit and we put a light on this side, uh, we want this side in darkness, you want to make sure there isn't a white wall next to me that the light's going to bounce off. So controlling uh, bounce light in the room is the next big thing you need to deal with. So we use a lot of black material to do this. So this material has different names in the film industry. Um, in Australia, we just call it blacks. Uh, it's called solids in other parts of the world and also duvetine. So just different names. Basically, it's black material. The idea is it soaks up any stray light. Now, when you're lighting a very moody shot like this, it is amazing just how much light can bounce off the floor. So for example, you might have a light colored carpet or polished floorboards. Polished floorboards bounce light really well. So before we brought any equipment into the room, the first thing we did was lay down to 12 by 15 foot blacks on the floor. Now, trust me on this, it's very important to do this before you start setting everything up because once you get the equipment in the room and get everything into place, putting a black down on the floor becomes impossible. Now, once we uh, got our floor down and brought all our equipment on, I started work uh, on the background, which was uh, a black material. Now, with the uh, black materials that you shoot into, you want something that, of course, is pristine, clean, and very dense material. So you don't want to be shooting and seeing through it. So in Australia, we call that a solid. Um, now, here's where a lot of um, uh, clients of mine uh, mess up when they're renting uh, something like that off me. Now, a lot of people think, well, I'm only filming one person standing. I don't need a big background. Okay, so that sort of makes sense. So you might be thinking six foot of black might do the trick. But then we factor in we've got somebody swinging a cricket bat. Well, that sort of extends it out a bit more. Then you start realizing that you definitely need a 20 foot background. Um, 12 foot maybe, but 20 foot definitely is a safe amount to have. So for us, 20 foot gave us just enough. We had a bit of leeway either side. Now where a lot of people also mess up when they, um, when they go to set up a scene like this, imagine a 20 uh, by 12 foot of black material. Imagine how much that weighs. So I get a lot of people hire something like that off me and I say to them, how are you going to rig it up? And they say, oh, we're just going to gaffer tape it to the wall. Uh, it is not going to hold. It is a lot of material. So it, it's a lot of square foot. So how I set that up is I use what we call a goal post, which is uh, two big light stands and a post across the top. So to give you some idea, have a look at the size of the stands that I'm using. There's quite a lot of weight here. Now, another reason to consider having a large background when you want it to be black is you can have it further away. So the further away we have our black from the lights, the darker it will be. And that is key when you want the background to be pitch black. Now, after I had that set up, I set up some other blacks to make sure we weren't having light bouncing around the room too much. So I had a 12 by 12 on this side of the room, a 12 by 12 uh, behind the camera, so that's feet, and a 12 foot by 12 foot on this side. Now, the one on this side was brought in closer to the talent, so it would act like a negative fill. Now, what a negative fill does is it increases contrast in the person's face by reducing any light that's going to bounce back at them from that direction. Now, let's talk about actually lighting it. So our key light, which is our main light that we use on the talent, our key light was an Aladdin fabric light. Now, Aladdin is just a brand name. So the reason we went with the Aladdin 350 fabric light is because it's three foot by three foot. So the reason we want a big source like three foot by three foot, basically the bigger the light source, the softer it is. So the bigger a light source, the more it wraps. So even though we're doing a, uh, a very moody shot, um, a very contrasty shot, something that, that could lend itself towards using a hard light, we wanted a soft light so that we don't get a very hard nose shadow, for example, or we don't get shadows off the eyebrows, or if they've got a pimple, we don't get a shadow of the pimple. So we still wanted a soft light. But here's the problem with soft lights. 
soft light goes everywhere. So to circumvent that, we used what's called a grid. So I'll just show you how a grid works. Okay, so imagine I'm the light source, okay? I'm the, I'm the Aladdin fabric light. And this is the grid that's going on the front of it. So this is how a grid controls the light spread. So now you see me, now you don't. Okay, so that's how it works. So basically this reduces the beam spread to 40 degrees. So that kept the light off our background, for example. Now, even with the grid on, we still got a little bit of stray light hitting one side of our 20 by 12 black. So we added a cutter to make sure that we didn't get any stray light at all. Now, the next lights we'll talk about are the lights that are in shot. And these are meant to resemble cricket wickets. So the uh, cricket wickets were made up from LED tubes. Uh, LED tubes, you can select uh, what color you want. So uh, we went with the color that is the team colors, the same color as the uniforms. Now with those, um, uh, those top uh, bales, the, the small part of the wicket at the top, we didn't have um, one foot LED tubes back when we shot this. So this was shot, I think last year, it was definitely shot pre-COVID. So that's actually a two foot tube. And then I just put a bit of black tape over the center to, to make it look like two lights. So that's the uh, cricket wickets. Now, the next lights we'll talk about are the edge lights. So the lights that are giving the outline or halo onto the players. Now, Ed wanted these lights to be the same color as the team colors and the same color as the cricket wickets. So it looks like the lights coming from them. So those lights were Sky Panel S60Cs. Now Sky Panel is just a brand name, uh, just a type of light, and they're a full color gamut light. So you can select a color and then um, and put that uh, into the lights. So we selected the uh, a color that closely matched the the team color, the uh, color of the uniform, and that's what we went with. Now the Sky Panels also had snap grids on them so that the light wouldn't go everywhere. So those two lights were supplying the edges on both sides of the players. Now that wasn't giving us enough light on the top of their heads. So we also added another light on a menace arm. So a menace arm is a long boom arm. So we had the standoff to one side, a long arm going out with the light attached. Now the light I had attached to that is a Luxley Timpani. So the reason I went with a Luxley Timpani, it's a full color gamut light, so we can dial in a color into it but it's a very lightweight light. A sky panel would have been too heavy for me to rig out there. So we had all three of those lights set to the same color, giving us our outline or halo. Now, the last thing I set up were some cutters. So um, I had two cutters here and a meat ax over the top. A meat ax is basically a really long cutter. Now they were for lens flare. So we had a, a camera moving around in here and the problem we had was the sky panels and the Luxley timpani we're sending light down the camera lens and causing it to flare. So we just put some cutters in place just to mask the light from hitting the camera lenses. Now, some of you might have noticed in the photos that uh, this wall here was green and you might be surprised that I didn't totally black that wall out because after all, you don't want green light bouncing around your set. It looks really terrible. Now that is the case if we're using white light. Okay, so if we have a look at the diagram here, that's our green wall. And the only white light we have on the set when we're filming is our key light, which is sending the light out that direction. Okay, so any light that's gonna bounce off this wall when we're filming is from our red lights. So it'd be from our sky panels, from our tubes in here, um, our back lights. Any light that's gonna hit this wall is going to be red light. Now, red light doesn't have green spectrum in it, okay? So that wall, when we're filming, isn't going to be green, it's going to be red. Okay, so I think I've covered pretty much everything there with the lighting, so uh, let's go back to Ed. Thanks, Andrew, for such a detailed explanation. Um, now I wanna transition into the camera side of things and let you guys know how we handled all that. But I also wanna take you guys through everything I had to do before, during, and after the shoot. 
But because this is going to be a long explanation and you guys have been watching this video for a while now, I'm going to cover all that in part two of this video, which will come out next week, same time, same place. So to make sure you don't miss it when it comes out, it's easy. All you have to do is subscribe to this channel and click on the notification bell. On the bright side, while you're waiting for part two, you now have plenty of time to go visit Andrew's channel and watch his videos to learn more about professional lighting. So once again, my name is E, and I hope I earned the privilege of your time. See you next week. Or in two seconds if a week has already gone by and in this case the video should be right here at the top left of your screen. <laughs> anyway, see you guys.